Welcome back to another video. My name is Steven Vanderhoek. We're gonna jump in today and talk about another personal finance video. This one, it's gonna be a really important subject. Hope you enjoy it, hope you learn something, and that you're working on your personal path towards financial freedom. Today, we're gonna talk about some of the best ways to conquer debt. Now, for some reason, people get really excited and animated about some of the different strategies. If you wanna talk about snowball versus avalanche, are you trying to conquer your minimum balances first versus your highest interest rates first? We're gonna cover that, talk about the pros and cons of different methods, and discuss really the best strategies to help you get out of debt and be financially independent. So overall, when it comes to conquering debt, there are two main streams of thought. One is that you go after your loans with the minimum balance first, and the other is that you go after your loans with the maximum interest rate first. So for in our example today, the first method would be you're going after the minimum balances first, and conquering from small to big, or the second method is paying off the highest interest rate first. And so in this example, we would go here, 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 then here, in order to pay off our debt. Now, I'm not entirely sure why people tie their personal identity and get so passionate about one method over the other. Realistically, what matters is that you're paying off your debt and ceasing to increase it, right? Trying to bail out water of your boat when you haven't plugged the holes, really really difficult so the first things first we got to plug the holes we got to stop increasing our debt so we got to stop financing cars we got to stop increasing your credit card balance not up for debate doesn't matter what you think which method you use if you're still increasing your debt we're never going to get out of it so the first thing is we got to stop doing that we got to cease the behavior then when we're ready you've made the decision hey i'm finally going to conquer debt i'm going to stop living my life off of someone else's money and become financially independent so again there are two main methods of paying off debt. One is gonna be the minimum balance and the other one's gonna be interest rate. So we're gonna call MB and INT, minimum balanced interest rate. So why do people even debate the two methods in the first place? Well, the first thing we need to know about the int highest interest rate method is that mathematically, it is the better method. You will pay less money or in interest if you use the highest interest rate method first. We have the two different methods. We have the minimum balance method and the highest interest rate method. Now, overall, the, print, the idea that we're talking about here is that we're gonna conquer one loan at a time and just knock it out so we can get rid of our debt and focus on one at a time versus having all of them slowly go down and never feeling like we're really making any progress. So what we're doing is we're gonna make the minimum payments on all of our loans and then we're gonna make all of our extra payment on one specific loan. Now it's either gonna be the loan with the minimum balance or the loan with the highest interest rate first. And then we take what's extra and shift it to the next loan in order. Now, I made up some numbers for today. We have a personal loan of $10,000 at 7% interest rate, a car loan at 3% for $5,000, credit card debt at 15%, big boy there, at $7,000, Student loans, $12,000, 3.5%. Then lastly, threw in something fun, a four-wheeler ATV, $3,000 at 5% interest rate. Now, when you debate the two different methods, minimum payment versus highest interest rate first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the minimum payment on every single one of our loans, and then we're gonna take some extra cash and throw that towards one of our loans, either the highest interest rate or the minimum balance. Now, the big reason why people want to do the highest interest rate first is because you do pay less money in interest over time. So mathematically, no questions asked. It's obvious you can run the numbers. It's just a fact. You're gonna pay less interest if you're paying the, your debt off with the loan that has the highest interest rate first. So if, you, if that's the best method mathematically, why do people even advocate another method? Well, two reasons. One, sometimes you can actually save time so you can get up debt faster doing the minimum balance first. It's weird, you, you pay more interest but you do it faster. But the big, big reason is motivation, right? We wanna stay excited and motivated. And when you actually pay off a debt, when one of your loans goes away and you have five different bill collectors and then you go down to four, you're just freaking pumped. So that's a big, big reason. And honestly, it is a really big factor. So staying energized and staying motivated and saying, hey, we have five bill collectors, now we have four, now we have three, two, and now just one. That's what gets people excited and gets people really motivated. Just think about it for a second. If you're making an extra 100 bucks a month towards your minimum payments, how much longer is it gonna to take to pay off $7,000 versus $3,000? So to get that first loan paid off and actually feel like you're making some progress and saying you went from five debt collectors to four debt collectors, that's gonna be the minimum balance method and that's the big advantage for it. Because 
realistically, if this is just a math problem, we would just go with the highest interest rate, no questions asked. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. But we're humans, we're more complex than that. We're not just calculators. There's probably a behavior problem going on. In this example today, there's definitely a behavior problem going on. Now, I don't consider all debt to be the worst in the world and that you made horrible financial decisions taking out some debt, but in this example, when we have credit cards, ATVs, cars, personal loans that are just unsecured signature loans, we clearly have a behavioral problem and that's what we gotta fix. So as a rule of thumb, if you have credit card debt, you got a behavior problem. Don't even ask, don't even start talking, don't debate it. You got a behavior problem, you got credit card debt. So let's jump into our example here, run the different numbers, talk about the different methods, and figure out the best way to pay off our debt. So in our example today, we have $37,000 total in debt. It's through these five different areas that we talked about with different interest rates, different balances, but 37K total. And our minimum balance, excuse me, our minimum payments is $710. So the first thing that we could do is we could just make our minimum payments on all of our loans, pay them off over time. This one would probably pay off first, probably followed by our car, and my guess is the personal loan would probably actually pay off before the credit card because of how high this interest rate and how low the minimum balance is, or the minimum, minimum payment. But if we do that, if we just do our 710 minimum in payments, that's gonna take us 24 years, and we're gonna pay over $23,000 in debt. That's not even an option. That is horrible. That's why when people look at their debt, they get so discouraged and they think, I'm never gonna get out of this. Freaking 24 years? Are you kidding me? 24 years and almost doubling the amount of money we spend total from 37,000 all the way up to, what is that? 70,000, right, is that right? Yeah, uh, $23,000 in interest, $70,000 we're gonna pay total to debt collectors, not an option. Forget that. If you want to get rid of debt, you cannot just be making your minimum payments. So the question is, how much extra can we squeeze out of our budget to put towards debt a month? Obviously, we could do something drastic and crazy and say, hey, we're just going to go move in with our parents, save in on our rent or our mortgage, whatever we're doing, and we're going to spend an extra $1,500 a month in rent. That we're spending in rent, we're going to put that towards debt. That's cool. That's exciting. That's awesome. Most people aren't in that situation. So all we're gonna do today is we're just gonna add an extra $100 towards our minimum payments, that's it. So we're gonna cover our minimum payments on all of our loans, and then we're gonna put an extra $100 per month towards one of our loans. Again, either the one with the minimum balance or the one with the highest interest rate. So let's just jump into the numbers real quick. Again, we're only spending an extra 100 bucks. That is realistic. Most people, if you have $37,000 in debt, you've got a nice car that you're driving, you clearly went to school because you have some student loans, so you're making at least minimum, what, 30K, probably 40, 50, anywhere up to 100K. I don't know what you're making, but realistically, you could squeeze out an extra 100 bucks a month. So going with the minimum balance method first, again, where we're gonna tackle this ATV first, then our car, then our credit card, then our personal loan, then our student loan, the Dave Ramsey method. If we're going with this method, we're gonna spend, again, our minimum balance, 810, so the minimum balance plus an extra $100. It's gonna take us four years, five months, and we're gonna spend $6,238. So you can see, automatically, again, 24 years, $23,000, not an option. We're automatically knocking off 20 years of debt payments, and we're gonna cut what? $17,000 in interest, it's a no-brainer. You have to do the extra $100 a month. That's not even that much. Again, we could talk drastically and say, hey, we wanna get out of debt in a year and just knock this out and be paying you know, 1,500, no, nah, that's more like what, $2,500 a month, knock that out in a year. Sure, we could do that, but we're only saying an extra $100 a month. We're gonna say this is gonna take us four years, four and a half years, four years, five months, we're gonna spend 6,200 bucks in interest. Okay, so now, I know this is getting a little jumbled, but we'll clear this up here. If we go over the highest interest rate method first, so again, now we're gonna pay off our credit card, then our personal loan, then our ATV, then our student loans, and lastly, our car. We're still gonna be doing 810 a month, that extra $100 a month. It's gonna take us a little bit longer. It's gonna be four years and nine months, so closer to five years. And it's gonna cost us $6,138 in debt, so you, in interest. So we're only gonna save $100 but it's actually gonna take a little bit longer. That's kind of weird, honestly. That's probably not realistic. I just kind of made up some numbers for the minimum payments, so your situation probably won't be like that. But if that is the situation, shoot, four months sooner to celebrate, I'd say that's worth 100 bucks by itself. But 
even if not. But the four month thing isn't really the big difference. The big difference is the fact that will we actually accomplish this? So we can run the numbers and say, yes, this is what happens if we stick to our plan. But before that, we gotta recognize, is this actually gonna happen? Are we gonna stay motivated? After the first couple of months of spending that extra money of not doing any more interest, not ever using your credit card, paying an extra hundred bucks a month, are you gonna stay motivated? And if you're knocking out a whole loan and saying, this is done, this title is mine, and this example is an ATV saying this four-wheeler is now mine, now, if it was me, I would actually just sell the four-wheeler, but whatever. We're gonna assume you wanna keep your stuff. So you could say, this, this title is now mine, I own this. That feels different. You start to say, hey, I'm starting to own things in my life. I'm recognizing this is truly mine. It's not someone else's, it's not the bank's. Because the bank owns your stuff until you pay it off, right? That's what we're talking about here. This is all about mental motivation. We're humans, we gotta stay motivated. And so realistically, while the numbers say the interest, highest interest rate is the better way to go, it's not that big of a difference. So why not go with the, thing, the method that gives you an extra boost in motivation? Now, personally, with, as we were conquering our debt, we actually went with the highest interest rate because I don't believe we had a behavior problem because just student loans that we were conquering, so not a big deal. Now, but for those who are making a big transition, when they're saying, hey, I used to have a lot of consumer debt, I used to be someone who just used my credit card for things, I used to finance everything I wanted to buy that was more than 100 bucks, that's the type of situation when we say, hey, you know what? We're making changes, we gotta stay motivated. This is difficult, I'm changing who I am, I'm changing the way I think, I'm changing the way I live my life. So get the extra motivation and go with this. Again, the biggest thing we gotta recognize, making the minimum payments, not an option. Can't do it. 20 years, $25,000 in debt, or whatever, $23,000 in interest, it's just not worth it. That's also assuming that you don't screw up at all and you actually make all your minimum payments. You don't get hit with any fees or anything like that. We do wanna talk about avoiding fees real quick here to wrap this video up. So we are gonna be making minimum payments on four of our five loans in this situation. And so there is a risk of missing a payment and doing something where you're actually gonna be paying fees, you're gonna get delinquencies, maybe your credit score gets dinged. So we don't wanna avoid that at all costs. So you can automate all of these payments. So even automate the minimum payment on whichever loan you're tackling. So in our example, you're tackling the ATV. Automate the minimum payment on that as well and then make sure that you pay the extra 100 bucks. Or if you recognize, hey, I just wanna automate all of it, then sweet, automate the extra 100 bucks built into that. And then once this loan is paid off, you celebrate. I always love celebrating after we pay off an entire loan. It makes you feel motivated, it's exciting. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I'm not saying you go on vacation, obviously, but you know, you can go out to dinner, you can go out to a movie, do whatever you want to say, hey, we conquered this loan, let's celebrate, let's feel good, let's stay motivated, and let's keep going. So as you're doing that, you're gonna be adjusting your minimum payments. And so now you're gonna take not only the extra $100 a month, but whatever your minimum payment was on this, let's say it was 120, so now you're paying an extra 220 a month towards your next loan, which in this case would be the car. So that's how we really snowball and get effective. We don't ever decrease this 810. The big flaw that you gotta watch out for is saying, hey, I'm gonna pay an extra, I'm gonna pay all my minimum payments plus $100. That's not what we're saying here. We're saying at the beginning of this journey, you're gonna take all your minimum payments, 710, and then add $100, and that's gonna be your monthly payment towards debt for the rest of your journey. So again, the first loan is only getting an extra $100 a month, but then the second loan is getting an extra like 220. And the third loan's getting an extra 350. So you really, really start to knock these out a lot faster. And again, that extra big payment makes these big, taller numbers more manageable because you're knocking them out faster. So there's a lot going on to stay motivated. There's a lot we're doing here to kind of trick ourselves to be excited and recognize, hey, we're actually making progress on this. This is not a 24 year journey that's never gonna end with us paying $70,000 in debt, $23,000 in interest. We're not doing that. We're gonna instead say, let's knock these out one load at a time and just keep on tackling. This 810 never goes down. In fact, what we often see is that it, gets, it goes up because people get motivated. They say, hey, you know what? I paid an extra 100 bucks a month and I knocked out this loan and then I paid an extra 220 a month towards my car. Well, you know what? I'm actually gonna just say $1,000 a month I'm gonna budget. So then they just dramatically shoot this up. So now we've got these three loans. Your minimum payments are gonna be around $500, we'll say but instead you're doubling that. You're paying $1,000 instead of the extra 310 at that point.
But bottom line, I hope you guys are motivated. For those of you who are trying to get out of debt, recognize you got to stop paying debt, right? You got to stop the holes. You got to plug the holes on your leaky boat before you can bail out the water. Otherwise, you're just going to be, it's going to be so hard. It's going to take you so long. And just, you don't get out of it. It's just unrealistic. Realistically, if you are still taking out debt while trying to make your way out and say, I'm going to be debt free, it's not going to happen. So you got to cut that first, change your behavior, be motivated, recognize you got to pay more than your minimum payments, not even an option. Honestly, between these, it doesn't really matter mathematically. You're not really saving that much money, but motivation wise, you are going to be better off doing the minimum balance first and going through and snowballing and just conquering through these debts one at a time, knocking these out. And then again, these ones just go off so fast because how fast can you pay off $12,000 when you're paying eight, 10 a month? It's pretty quick. Right? That's going to take, realistically, by the time we get here, we're a couple, you know, three years into our journey, maybe a little more, three and a half years. And so this has gone down. We're looking at 10K at that point because you have been making your minimum payments. You have been decreasing these a little bit at a time, knocking off a little bit. And then at the end, you're saying, hey, I got one loan left. I'm paying eight, 10. Or again, maybe you got motivated. You're paying $1,000 a month for $10,000. It takes you about 10 months, right? A little bit longer with interest, whatever. Hope you learned something today. Hope you can stay motivated get out from under your debt and be financially free. See you next time.